The Lord takes care of all fragile heart, and He is the only one who can put it back together and make you smile and laugh again. Emmy-nominated and best-selling comedian, author and actress Shonda Pierce has brought laughter to audiences around the world for decades, and she is known for making anyone laugh during a simple conversation. Even though she has cried many tears in her life, she continues to smile and share the message of Jesus. This is her story. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith. Shonda, I am so excited <laughs> to be here with you today. We were we were giggling a little bit ago. We're, well, we're you know, it's like, been years. Yeah, and we know too much about each other. Yes, we do. We've been <laughs> at the barn, at the beach. Yes, we have. Super Bowl. Yes. Do you remember that? That was great. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. We, we you know, it's been a great journey. I love your new show. I love the format. I love everything that you're doing. Thank you. I, you know, I envy your skinny waist and what you do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shonda, you have been so busy. Yes. And the last time we talked, we, we went way back in your past. Yes. And we don't want to, I'm going to leave it there. Yay. Yeah. And we're going to go from David. Yes. And, and how God, you know, has taken you. On he's that given, journey. And he's given you, yeah, on a huge journey. Yes. You know, it's interesting. I always say grief is the gift that keeps on giving, and it does. And my heart is so tender toward other widows. And I see them, they'll come to my shows, they'll say something, oh, I read your book, or I heard your husband passed, and they, they, want, a, they want a helpful hint of what's going to get through it. And I always tell them, as much as I hate to tell you this, it's just time. It just takes time. And so don't be afraid to weep. You know, my, I always say getting through grief is three W's, you know, uh, wake up. You know, in other words, that means just get out of bed, do the next thing. The other one is let yourself weep. But the third one is worship every chance you get. Oh, that's good. Because when you worship, you know, even if it's running the vacuum and playing your favorite praise music, there's something about that that puts your mindset and puts all your grief in perspective. It doesn't make it easy. I still miss my man very, very much. How, how long has it been now? It'll be actually, while we're filming this, it's nine years tomorrow. Nine yeah. Tomorrow. So, it, and so it's tender. Those are triggers, we call them, when a birthday comes along. And as you well know, talking about the past, if I get a trigger, then I, I have a snowball reasons to cry and grieve. And my brother and I are the only living members of our family now. You know, I was sitting on a picnic table at the porch, the, I mean, at the farm the other day. And I said, the farm looks so good. We should have a family reunion. He goes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> but what I love about that, we still maintain a sense of humor. You know, not long ago, I, I dug up my whole, you know, family that was in one cemetery, part of the family's in another one, dug them all up and took them all out to the farm. And it became the funniest day of my life. Well, I saw it. Did yes. you have like video? Did you have video? I videoed or? it because just thinking this is going to be funny because my brother couldn't be there. So I wanted to video it for him. And then I kept on there. I kept commentating. You know, I told my son because it was four bodies on a flatbed truck. That only, it's the way you do it in Tennessee. And I kept say, telling my son, I will give you $100 if you go through McDonald's and order four cheeseburgers just, oh. just to watch their face. And he goes, Mom, did you take your meds? <laughs> <laughs> and you, take, you took them to the farm. I did. I did. There's oh, a real peace out there, as you well know. I've been blessed to have that piece of property for a long, long time. I'm finishing up a house, uh, which is a project David and I started many, many years ago. And I feel real complete in that. I feel nature is a beautiful way to worship. It's a beautiful When place. you enjoy a sunset or you're loving the trees or you see a flower blooming, every minute, of, every chance you get, you need to thank God for those things. A bird will fly by, you know, but people always tease and say, if it's a red cardinal, it's your husband. I'm like, then I have a BB gun. Oh. <laughs> yeah, stop spying on me. No. It, is, um, it, it is just a peaceful place, but nature does that for me. The beach does that for me. A reality of the creator is what I think happens out there for me all the time. And also then, you know, I live in about 100 acres and I'm in the very middle of it. So it's a real trek through the woods to get to my house. And 
What's sweet about that is you come into perspective of how small you are, which in my line of work probably needs to be, but also how if God is taking care of that little sparrow that flew by or that tree that's growing, he, he's going to, I'm, then I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm in good hands. Yeah. You know, I love the, I mean, I've been out to the farm. Yes. And we helped clean the barn. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm still working on that place to make it a fun little, you yeah. know. It's amazing. It's in, precious. In the barn, I mean, you have a place where you do worship. I do. I do. And have events. And I do. We, a lot of us just, you know, friends and peers and a lot of artists come and write songs out there. There is something anointing about that little land that happened a long, long time ago when Dave and I first got it. Um, and a lady came and prayed over it and walked through the woods. We had anointing oil in a, like a bug sprayer thing <laughs> and just anointed every inch of the land that we could. And she said the word that the Lord gave her while she was there was the word peace. And it's been peace for me, just as much as it has for people that come out and enjoy it. I love the Funny Farm. Come see us at the Funny Farm. And that's what it's called, Funny Farm. It's called farm. the Funny Big sign at the front that says, Welcome to the Funny Farm. You know, farm. when we drove out there, I remember it's like, where is that? Yeah. And then we saw that sign, I said, this has to be it. This <laughs> it has is. To be it. You know, and it's, I've been in the Funny Farm, if you know what I mean, but it's also representative of all the laughter that that farm built. You know, every laugh, every night, in every concert, they contributed to the peace of that place. That yeah. is amazing. And so your home is going to be ready soon. Ready soon, I hope. I hope before I go back to work, but I don't know. It, You know, the COVID delays for builders and all of those things. But I have really strategically picked and, you know, picked things and chose things that one are, are farmhouse and simple, but that will glorify that land, you know, that we're where it's just a place of comfort for me. But uh, but it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And it, it was kind of the new glitz and glam and something, you know, vibrant that I needed to get through these eight, nine years of grief. And now I'm ready to, to decorate just for me. And I, I have struggled. I struggle feeling a little selfish about it. But God is so faithful. When something is difficult in one area of my life, He lifts up another which teaches me, okay, in this area, he's wanting me to stay in a waiting room for a little bit, like a man coming along. But in this area, he's going to bless me so that I can wait through the dark stuff. Yeah. You know what? He has done an amazing work in you. Yes. I'm glad you can see that. Oh. You've seen me on some down days, too. You know what? It, it's been amazing. And the people, the people that you reach, with your shows and you're still busy. I saw the oh, schedule coming up. Yeah, it's crazy. And you were just at um, the Opry. Yes, I did Friday the Opry night. a lot. Yeah. It's a oh, blessing. you're there all the time. I am there a lot. Okay, yeah. before we go to break, I want you to share one of your favorite jokes that you tell. Can you think of one? <laughs> well, right off the bat. Right now, my favorite is always, it's always about Spanx and, and teasing skinny girls. So there you go. But uh, my favorite still works is that I put on a pair of Spanx and my thumb went through and the fat oozed out and I thought I had a tumor. So that's all. Can you get the dough back in a Pillsbury can? You know, that's always my favorite. It always goes over with my crowd, you know. And a lot of comedy is about knowing who's listening. You know, I am blessed that for 27 years, I've grown up with the girlfriends in my audience, you know. Now they're bringing their granddaughters and their daughters, you know. But for the most part, I still talk to women, and I love it. And Shonda, when we get back, we're going to talk more about what God is doing in your life. Baby. 